Hey, what's up everybody? Tyson France here with another Motion Revolver After Effects tutorial. This time we'll be going over image sequences, what they are, how to render them, and how they might save you time and hopefully prevent headaches in the future. Uh, anyone who has created a longer animation for a client may have had an experience where they've rendered out the QuickTime, sent the final to the client, and then at the very last minute the client realizes that they want to change something very small within the animation, say just like a piece of text or swap out um, a, a video or an image, and um, you may have just spent several hours rendering this really long animation and all of a sudden the client wants to change this really minute thing that um, creates a pretty big headache for you if you don't have an image sequence rendered. So to illustrate my point, I've set up this really simple After Effects project. Um, it has a few sections. Um, each section has a different color background and then the, the uh, text within a section changes um, based on what section we're in. This animation is 30 seconds long. So at 30 frames per second, um, 30 seconds is gonna create 900 files in an image sequence. So for those of you who are not familiar with image sequences at all, what they are when you render them out is a whole list of files. So what After Effects has done when I rendered out this, this Photoshop image sequence, it's created one file per frame of the animation. So if I preview this and I cycle through the files, you can see each frame is rendered as its own file. So when I import this back into After Effects, After Effects is going to interpret it as um, an, an image sequence and it's going to make it its own self-contained playable media source that you can then use within After Effects. So how do we get to this point? Well, once we have our animation completed and we're ready to render the image sequence, all we do, just like uh, uh, basically rendering any other QuickTime file, we go up to our render queue and we drop in our uh, composition. And we just want to make sure that the render settings are set to best so that we get the highest uh, resolution possible. And then After Effects has a preset called Photoshop. So when we go to the output module and click on this drop down arrow, we want to pick uh, Photoshop here from the menu. And you can see by selecting Photoshop, it changed the output to, uh, to a Photoshop file. Now, I usually take out the end of my um, comp names, but you can change the comp name to uh, whatever you want. The most important part of this is that you want to make sure that you leave this content in the file name. You want to leave the brackets with the hashtags because that's where After Effects is, is, is going to know that it needs to uh, actually generate a frame number for whatever frame that it is um, actually rendering. So when you re-import the image sequence back into After Effects, it knows in what order that these uh, frames need to be placed so, so that the animation plays properly. So when we're rendering, our image sequence, we also want to make sure another very important part is that we render to a self-contained folder. Obviously, you would not want to render this to your desktop when it's going to be producing so many files. Uh, that would be a nightmare. So always make sure that when you're rendering an image sequence uh, to create a folder. And what I've done for this tutorial is, is I've created an SEQ uh, folder and that's where all of these files have been rendered. And again, there are 900 of them in this sequence because my animation is 30 seconds long. All right. So once you've rendered that out, um, what you're going to do is import it back into After Effects. So I've created an SEQ, uh, which stands for sequence, by the way. Uh, I've created an SEQ folder, and I'm going to import that by hitting Command-I on the keyboard. And we'll navigate to where we just rendered the uh, image sequence. And all we have to do is highlight the first file in the list. And After Effects is, is going to notice that these are actually numbered and realize that this is an image sequence and it needs to, to piece all of these files together uh, to create an, an animation out of them. 
So After Effects is going to look inside this folder and realize that it needs to create a self-contained media asset for you to use within After Effects. I usually also go ahead and enforce alphabetical order just to make sure that After Effects is resorting back to these numbers here to make sure that all of the files are in the correct order. Um, so once you've rendered the um, image sequence, it's really important to make sure that you don't place anything else within this, this actual sequence folder. You want to make sure that this only contains the image sequence itself. So we import that. After Effects recognizes it as a sequence, and you can go ahead and change this. We'll just change it to image sequence so that we know what we're dealing with. So After Effects rendered this out and we can now play this as a self-contained media asset that we can use within After Effects. So if we want to interpret this to whatever frame rate that we're working on in our master composition, if this is going to be, you know, uh, going to like um, NTSC broadcast or um, if you're working with PAL, you, you would like uh, obviously want to make sure that everything matches as far as as the frame rate so that you don't have any sync issues or any play, playback issues when it comes to the final uh, uh, asset. So we're going to interpret this and uh, we'll just right click on this and go to interpret footage main and instead of 30 frames per second since our master comp um, is 29.97 we're going to change this to 29.97. So now our image sequence has been reverted back to our, uh, our, our project frame rate that we were currently working with. We also need to create a new composition. So we're going to drag this image sequence down to the icon here, the comp icon. We'll create a new image sequence and take that two off of there and drop this into our compositions folder. So here's the thing about um, working with image sequences. Now we have our, our um, image sequence in our new composition, but obviously image sequences cannot contain audio. So what we have here is the, the visual asset, but we don't have the, the audio asset. So what I like to do is I like to take the master composition that all of my animation um, occurs in, because obviously that's where I have my uh, song or my audio, my you know voiceover, whatever I've been uh, editing to, that's where all of that um, content lives. So I want to drag that master composition into my newly created comp that contains the image sequence. And you can place that in here and then turn off the visibility so that it isn't rendering it. And just leave the audio checked. That way, what you have now is the audio from your master comp synced exactly to the image sequence that you already have uh, rendered. So by rendering out this composition as a quick time, you've essentially cut your time in, in a fraction of what it would normally take to actually render a self-contained quick time. Um, so let's go back to what issue that this um, you know, actual method solves. So we were talking about how our client, after we've already sent them the QuickTime and they were happy with it, at the last minute they were like, you know what, we want section two, instead of saying section two content, we wanted to say we love section two. And obviously you can see how if all you had was a self-contained QuickTime and this animation was three or four minutes long and it took you six hours to render, you're thinking to yourself, Wow, now I have to render this entire animation uh, all, all over again and spend however many hours it took just to change this little piece of text. But if you were smart and rendered an image sequence first, now all you have to do is render out this little section of the animation that was changed instead of the entire thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to position our playhead at the very beginning of where the change occurs. So I'll just pick, since our, our, our second section starts here, I'll put the playhead at five seconds at the beginning of our new section. I'll, I'll hit the B key to change the uh, beginning of our, uh, uh, whatever you call this, the, um, the, play, the, the play area or the live area. Um, and then I'll set the end point at the very end of our section here and hit the N key uh, 
the work area. That's what it's called, the work area. So we, we've set the work area with these bars up top here. We've, we've set the work area to be self-contained within this little section that was changed. So since the client wanted the new text, all we have to render out is this section. So now when we place this composition back into our the render queue, when we place this into the render queue, all we have to do is make sure that we have our same render settings, change this back to Photoshop, make sure that the uh, file name is consistent, and then go back to the same location we just rendered the sequence out. So in our sequence folder, we make sure that the file name is the same, image sequence, and then uh, the hashtags for um, for the number. And then we hit save. And uh, when we render this, After Effects is only going to render out this portion of the animation. Just make sure we have everything going good here. Um, we, we also want to make sure uh, that if we need to just render a section, we, we click on best settings here and we have to make sure that time span is work area only. If this is set to length of comp, it's going to render out the entire length of the comp no matter where the work area we have set. So when we're only rendering a small chunk of the animation, make sure that work area only is selected, which it is, so we'll leave it alone. And then we'll close this out and we'll render this animation with our new changes. Okay, now that we have our change rendered, um, all we have to do now is go to our project window, locate the image sequence file, right click on it, and select reload footage. And that's going to reload the entire sequence so that whatever changes we just made are now refreshed and uh, imported into After Effects. So we go to our image sequence, and as you can see, we rendered out the client's changes to We Love Section 2. And we didn't have to render the, the entire thing. So now we can render out this section as a quick time. And it's going to take a fraction of the time that it took that it, that it would have taken to render out the entire animation as a self-contained QuickTime. So as you can see, this can ultimately wind up saving you countless hours of actual render time. And I don't know how many times this has saved me. Um, I, I do uh, occasionally work with very long animations and I know that when a client has, has a change, all I have to do is you know, render out a very small portion and then import that back in the After Effects and then render the as, as a quick time. You're talking about countless hours that can be saved with any particular project. And uh, you may even impress your client as to how quickly you can turn around if you have your project set up in this method. Uh, hopefully this was easy enough to understand. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to email me. I'll be happy to help you out if you need additional um, assistance or help with um, rendering image sequences. And uh, once again, thank you very much for watching. I'm Tyson France with Motion Revolver, and we'll see you soon.